Let's get a four-wire bipolar stepper up and running with a low-cost A4988 based micro-stepping motor control module. I have an upcoming project in mind and I only need something simple and I have some of these style modules laying around so I thought I would get this going. So we're going to look at how this chip actually works and how the control signals work and how to hook up a four-wire stepper motor if we don't know which pin does what. Looking at the basic features of the driver chip, here's a typical hookup diagram and there's two power supplies. VDD is the logic side power supply. That can be 3.3 or 5 volts. We're going to use 5 volts coming from Arduino. VBB is the motor power supply and that can be 8 to 35 volts. I'm going to use 12 volts for the motor I have. This driver can do micro-stepping, so you can get full steps, half, quarter, eighth, and sixteenth, which will give you finer increments of rotation. The motor I'm using moves 1.8 degrees for every step increment, so it takes 200 steps to go 360 degrees full circle. And as we go into micro-stepping mode, it takes more and more steps to go full circle, which means you get finer control over how far you rotate. Depending which mode you're in and how much control you need, there will be trade-offs with torque and vibration and noise, things like that. And this driver supports up to 2 amps per winding, but you'll need a heatsink if you go beyond about 1 amp. I'm going to use mine at max 700 milliamps, so I'm not worried about a heatsink. So looking at this typical application, any small support components are going to be on this driver board module we're using. We're going to use an Arduino Uno to provide 5 volts for the logic and we're going to provide control signals. On the motor side, I'm going to supply 12 volts for my motor and we need to provide this external electrolytic capacitor for the motor's power supply. That helps with motor power supply filtering and meeting the high current demands while the driver is turning the windings on and off. The driver board contains a sense resistor for each winding and that combined with a voltage provided to this VREF pin with an on-board potentiometer on the module, we can set the current limit for the motor windings. That potentiometer is right here. For this bipolar four-wire stepper, if you don't happen to know the pinouts of your motor, all we really need to do is figure out any two wires that belong to the same coil and then automatically the other two wires belong to the other coil and at that point it doesn't matter which pair we put to which of the two outputs as long as both output 1 pins go to the same coil and output 2 go to the same coil. If we switch this output 1 and 2 pair, or if we switch the two wires on a given pair, all that happens is the motor is just going to run in a different direction. So if we need to make sure it's running clockwise or counterclockwise at a certain time, we can either reverse the wiring or use the software direction control to change the motor direction. So in order to find a pair of wires belonging to the same coil, one way is we can just measure the resistance across any two wires on the motor and if we see an open circuit, infinite resistance, that's two wires from two different coils. And when we find a pair that gives us a couple of ohms resistance maybe, now we have found two wires that belong to one coil and we can start hooking it up. Another way is to just use an LED instead of a multimeter. Again, choose any two wires, put them across an LED, and rotate the motor shaft by hand, see if the LED lights up. It doesn't matter which direction you spin, or which way the LED is. If those two wires belong to the same coil, the LED will light up. If you don't have a multimeter or an LED, you can also just short the wires out, and when you try to manually turn the motor shaft, if you feel more resistance than when you turn it without anything connected, those two wires belong to the same coil. When we have everything set up, it's relatively easy to control this motor. The pins MS1 to MS3 control the micro-step resolution between full down to 16th step. So all we have to do is make sure the driver is not in sleep mode, it is enabled, it is not in reset, and then we just choose a direction and give clock pulses on the step pin, and every pulse will advance the motor based on the micro-step resolution. Here's how the three microstep control pins can be configured for the various step modes. The three pins have internal pulldowns on the chip, so by default if we don't control these pins, the chip will be in full step mode. And as we change those pins, we can go to the different microstep modes. I didn't really see anything 
in the datasheet saying how to choose this or the voltage rating on it. So when in doubt, go to the manufacturer's web page for the chip. We come over here, there's the datasheet, and in the design support, there's a demo board, so that can give us some clues. Although demo boards are not always optimized or even perfectly correct, it doesn't hurt to take a look at what they've put together. So here's their motor power supply, and they have a 47 micro on here. So if we go to the bomb, C2 is a 50 volt electrolytic, so that can give us a ballpark just for experimenting as well on the bench. So before we start using the motor, we have to make sure we've adjusted the potentiometer so the current limit of this driver board is suitable for the ratings on this motor. There's two ways to do this. Looking at the data sheet, if we know the maximum current we want in the motor winding, we can calculate the VREF we want on the pot using this equation and the value of the sense resistor that's on our module. So let's say I want 700 milliamps. My module happens to have a 0 0.1 ohm sense resistor, and so without the stepper connected and or without this 12 volt motor supply connected, just with the logic supply connected, we can put a voltmeter between ground and the positive terminal can be on this potentiometer body itself. And you adjust this with a flat screwdriver, even though it looks like Phillips. I could only really get it to work with flathead. You adjust this to whatever the calculated VREF was. But people, including myself, have found that whatever you calculate and whatever you set this pot to, then if you actually go and put an ammeter in line with a motor coil, it may not be what you set it to. And furthermore, I have found if I happen to have the motor power supply connected versus not connected and just 5 volts, just by doing that, I see a different VREF reading on this pot. And then there's obviously component tolerances and such. So for my purposes, I'm going to go with the more practical approach, and I'm just going to set this empirically by measuring the current through a winding. To adjust the current limit potentiometer just by measuring the current in one of the stepper windings empirically, the quick answer is we put the motor driver in full step mode and we make sure we are not actively stepping the motor so we don't change the step pin. So in my case I'm just going to take step and direction and tie them to 5 volts. What this table here tells us, if we are in full step mode, the motor windings are going to be controlled in one of four different states by turning the windings on and off with alternating polarities. And as a result, the current in each of these windings works out to be 70.71% of our set maximum current limit. So the current may be positive or negative depending which polarity the winding is being controlled with as the driver switches ground and motor positive, but it's always going to be a known current set point. And because I want to be able to use the motor in all of these step modes available, when I'm doing any of these micro-stepping modes, at some point in the step sequence, the windings are going to reach 100% of the current limit that I set. So if I want 700 milliamps max on my motor, that means if I'm doing micro-stepping, at some point in the sequence, I'm going to be consuming 100% of my 700 milliamp limit. But when I'm doing full step, I'm only going to consume 70.71% of my max current limit. So that's what I need to actually measure on the ammeter when I'm in full step mode adjusting the potentiometer to set the current limit based on what I see on the ammeter. So 70.71% of my 700 milliamps means I hook up the ammeter in line with either coil and I'm looking for about 495 milliamps. When I have the potentiometer set to give me this current reading, then I know I'm safe if I switch over to any of these microstep modes and I reach 100% of my current limit, 700 milliamps. Everything's good. So to set that empirically, just using a current meter in series with one of the windings, I have 12 volts for the motor right here, but it's currently turned off, although I do have 5 volts from Arduino powering the logic side of the driver board. The four outputs for the stepper are connected, where one of them has this current meter in series. The three micro-stepping pins are set for full step mode, and I have the direction and step controls both tied to 5 volts, so when I apply 12 volts for the motor, it's just going to hold position in full step mode. 
But before I give it 12 volts, I want to see that the potentiometer is set low. So putting a voltmeter from ground to the actual potentiometer, right now it's just showing 0.6 volts, and I'm just going to turn this down so that the voltage and the current limit is relatively low. Now I'm going to turn on the 12 volt supply and check the current in the winding. And it's around 8 milliamps or so. In order to set the current limit for max 700 milliamps, the current in the winding should be around 70% of the maximum current limit. So around 70% of 700 milliamps is between 490 to 500 milliamps. Now let's look at the rest of this setup. So we figured out how to hook up this motor. We know we want 700 milliamps in this case, so we've already configured the driver. We're giving it 12 volts. We have our external electrolytic capacitor. The motor power supply comes to the driver here. The logic 5 volt supply comes here. We're getting it from Arduino. The enable pin has to be low to enable the chip. And right here, we just leave it floating because on board, there's a pull down resistor. Reset and sleep need to be both high in order to let the driver run. And the sleep pin actually has a pull up on this board. So what we do is just tie reset over to sleep and then both are pulled high. Now all we need to do is control the micro step mode and then the direction of the motor and we have to give it clock pulses on the step pin. So all of those controls are coming from these Arduino pins and from our sketch the pot will control the speed of the motor in the sketch. I can press a button to change the direction back and forth. I have another button where every time I press it the motor will move 200 steps, and the other button is the micro step mode. So as I press, it will switch through all the steps from full down to 16th and then cycle back. Looking at the sketch, for the push buttons, I'm using the bounce to debounce library. These are all of my output pins to control the driver, inputs for the buttons, and the potentiometer analog input. So this is just generic setup for the debounce. I create these objects called direction in, run in, and micro step in. And later in the sketch, we then reference these. For example, down in setup, I can communicate with this debounce object called direction in. I'm assigning to this direction debounce the button direction pin, which is pin 7 on Arduino. And I'm configuring it as an input with a pull up as usual because the button goes to ground. And I'm assigning a debounce interval. So for the rest of the sketch, we talk to this object. To toggle between the microstep modes, I created this little array of five bytes. But this first one, it's called binary 000 for full step mode. Because in the data sheet, when all three pins are low, we are in full step. And so the rest of these patterns are what I have in the sketch. So when all of these are high, we have 16th step. And I have that set right here. So when I want to change the micro step mode, I access this array and the appropriate byte, and then I individually pick off what these three pins are supposed to be and I set them. And since I'm stepping between these five modes, I made this little counter so I can track which micro step mode I'm currently in. In the setup, as we already looked at, we have to configure those three push buttons. We set the motor control pins as outputs and assign them some defaults. Now we go through the loop and we talk to these button objects and update them just to see has anything changed on the pins. So we check the first button. Did the direction input button have a falling edge? If so, we want to change the direction pin. So we're basically toggling the pin by setting it to what it currently isn't. If we pressed the run button, we want to run the motor for 200 steps and we want to be able to use the pot to change the speed. So we create a variable called motor speed, which reads in the analog pot, translates it from the analog min and max readings to max and min delay times. And what we're doing, we want to clock the step pin high and low for every advancement 200 times. So we set the step pin high, we do a delay, which is going to be a longer delay to run slower. Then we set the step pin low and delay again, and we're doing this 200 steps. If we have the pot all the way up, we want the motor to run fast, so we want our minimum delay mapped over there, and so we have less delay between steps and the motor goes faster. 
If we have pressed the micro step push button, we want to increment our counter that tracks what mode we're in. And if we get to the end of our available list of micro step modes, we want to just cycle back to zero and go back to full step. So that's this counter we set up here. So out of this array called micro steps, when the counter is zero, if we push the button, so MS mode goes to one, that means if we access the data in micro steps element one, that's going to be here. And this configuration of these three micro step pins will give us half step mode. So right here, we check that micro step config array element one, and whatever's in bit position two is what we're going to assign to the motor control pin micro step one. If we push the button again, and we are in MS mode equals two, that means zero, one, two, we're in quarter step mode, and we set the pins 0, 1, 0, MS1, MS2, MS3. If we check the data sheet, 0, 1, 0 for MS1, 2, 3 puts us in quarter step. So that's how I'm making use of this to change the micro step resolution based on when the button is pressed. Here's the setup with the Arduino right here controlling everything. There's 12 volts for the motor coming from here to the driver board, 5 volts coming to the driver board, and all the control signals. The motor outputs are going here to this other breadboard just to connect up to the motor. And I'm using this general purpose I.O. board with three push buttons and one potentiometer going to Arduino for the controls. So at full step, it should rotate completely around once. And I can change direction. It'll go the other way. Change it back. And now if I switch to half step, it's going to do 200 steps and only make it halfway around. So I'd have to do another 200 steps to go full circle. And I can go backwards halfway. If I switch modes again to quarter step, it's only going to go quarter of the way each time. Or back. Eighth stepping, it'll go one eighth of the way in either direction for every 200 steps. And if I go to 16th step mode, it's only going to go a 16th of the way around. So now I can also change the speed of this with this potentiometer. If I turn it up, it'll go way faster. If I turn it way down, it'll go slow. So it looks like the stepper circuit works. And now I know how to control it, so I'm ready to get up and running with a project. Hopefully you found it useful as well. If you did, give it a thumbs up, and I'll see you on the next video.